Hey, what's going on, everybody? Once again, this is uh, Chris coming at you from my channel, I Am Toys. Uh, this time the review is going to be the Back to the Future Part 2 Marty McFly which is probably hands down one of my favorite Back to the Future films um, probably th my favorite uh, period um, amongst the uh, the three that currently exist anyway so uh, I, I know there is some controversy and some complaints about the sculpt, the expression and stuff like that uh, for me, that was pretty much negligible because this is the Back to the Future Part 2 Marty McFly. So, uh, for me, the sculpt is there. It's good enough. We'll get into that when, uh, we sh when I zoom in on the sculpt and show you that stuff and we rotate them around. But uh, I'm going to get you know a little bit personal with you guys. But w w when I was a kid, um, I didn't have a dad when I was growing up. So, you know, things that your dad would normally teach you how to do you know, such as being brave and, you know, how to talk to girls and stuff like that and, you know, so on and so forth. I didn't have a dad to teach me that when I was growing up. So I learned a lot of stuff that you would probably learn from your father through movies, essentially. So I was brought up on these movies. Uh, these movies kind of raised me in a way, especially uh, the Back to the Future series. So these are definitely figures that, for me, are, are, are must-haves. So I just wanted to give you that little personal tidbit, but uh, you know there are a lot of movies that raised me as a kid, and this is this is definitely one of them. So we'll uh, we'll get right into it, and uh, let me show you that head sculpt, and we can either complain or or uh, or love it. We'll see. You guys make that judgment. Let's just get to it. Here's the close up on the sculpt. You know you're either gonna love it or hate it. I definitely I I can agree with some people that um, the expression. Maybe it could have been a little bit different. I know some people were saying um, some of the feedback I saw was that, well, he, how do I say this? For the majority of the film, he was kind of always confused, I guess, in a way, uh, kind of trying to figure out what's going on. Um, kind of always had his mouth open a little bit as well, from what I remember from that film. Yeah, I definitely remember a lot of stares uh, from him with, with his mouth like slightly open. So. Maybe they could have done something like that, but you know, I, I I don't know how well that would work for some other poses. You know, no matter what we do, what what expression they 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 put on a figure, you're gonna have some limits with regards to what you can do. So this is pretty neutral, but I really don't have a problem with it. I I see Marty McFly's likeness in there 100 percent. So. If I were, if I were to rate the sculpt on, on a scale of one to ten, I'd probably give it about a nine. Uh, you know, if I really want to push it, maybe a nine point five. But it, it, you, it, it's, the likeness is definitely there. You know, that's Michael. That's a young Michael J. Fox. I know a lot of people probably aren't going to be happy with it. Uh, some people will. Uh, like the story I shared in the beginning, if if you have an affinity for this figure, you have some personal experience that ties you to this figure or to the film. That makes it a little bit more personable for you, like it is for me. You know, I told you my experience with these films. You know, then you're, this is going to be something that you're going to want to have. So I'm very excited to have this figure. I'm very excited to have Doc Brown um, come at some point when they do release it. So you know, it's uh, you know, it, it, it's in the eye of the beholder, as a lot of people always say, and as I always say. And if you don't like it, don't buy it. You know, this the figure is this is uh, upwards of 200 bucks. You know, and some people, they need to justify the money they spend, right? So, you know, it is what it is. So let me, uh, let me rotate this sculpt around for you. And I'll do a pan of the body. We'll go through some of the accessories, which are really awesome, as far as I'm concerned, for what they've included. I think they really keyed in on the, on the good moments of the film uh, and included what... What you really should have. The, the, now, this is the exclusive. The exclusive accessory probably could have been, I don't know, maybe something else. Uh, like if they were gonna, I don't know if you guys, if many of you know, but the the gun, the arcade gun, comes with it. If you were going to include that accessory, maybe uh, you know, we'll talk about it later. Let's just rotate the sculpt around. 
All right, so I'm gonna hit that button for you guys and rotate the sculpt around. Give you a 360 pan of that. And what I'm also gonna do is uh, change the focus spot on this so it doesn't start going out of focus for you guys. Uh, bear with me just a second. Uh, keep that right there. Uh, the hat obviously is not as dyed or technicolored as uh, or colorful rather as it was in the movie. So the overall figure set does lose a few points because of that. But all in all, the uh, detail is good. I mean, I mean, who knows what the problem was? Maybe they couldn't integrate as much paint into it as uh, as they wanted to. But you know, I don't know. But they were able to at least get some of the color in. You know, maybe it was a production issue. Maybe someone just didn't look at it close enough. <laughs> you know, who knows? You know, who knows what their reference what their reference point was? But it's it's decent enough. You still obviously know that that's the hat from the film and that he was wearing. And as this comes back around, I'm going to stop it. And for a second, I thought the hat was actually part of the sculpt on the hair. So the hair, the hair removes on this. And what I'm going to do is stop it about right there. And show you that this actually comes off like that. And that's a separate sculpt. Just so we hit that. Uh, the hair is actually a separate sculpt, rather. And it comes off. If I can pull from the back, it's probably the easiest way. And it comes off like that. So just be careful on and off because you probably get a little bit of paint rub. He looks kind of kind of freaky and jacked up, right? But you can already see up here there's some paint rub coming off already from the uh, from the head, and that's probably from the previous uh, hair sculpt that was on it, the regular that doesn't fit the hat. So, once again, you know, just be careful what you're doing, man. If you've been in the hobby long enough, you know. So, you can put that back on. Uh, you can see a little bit, I don't know if the seam is coming through, but you can see a little bit of the seam right at the top here. So, I don't know if that's honestly coming through or not. But, if it isn't, I'm sorry. But, it's not that noticeable, so who cares. All right. So that's the head sculpt, and I guess what we'll do now is uh, I'll probably back out a little bit and we'll pan the figure um, up and down, show you the detail on the outfit or whatnot, which is uh, pretty damn good, and we'll keep it rolling. All right, so as we uh, they pan the figure, um, you know, basic pleather material on the jacket, obviously, uh, you know, the arms, and then they probably use the same material for the red portions, you know, that kind of little micro dot uh, texture, and then they basically just paint over it. it's like a ribbing kind of uh, uh, pretty close to the film as far as I can tell it uh, definitely gives that look well you know is it 100% screen accurate no it's not but it's uh, it's close enough does the job for me you know you got the basic blue jeans nothing too fancy and then you got the uh, the Nike uh, shoes and um, they're of course they're not branded uh, you know, they weren't able to uh, obviously get the branding rights to that. But, man, if I remember correctly, uh, you know what, maybe I'm wrong. I, I thought at SDCC, uh, like maybe two years ago, I thought they had the Nike symbols on there. But um, maybe they removed them <clears throat> in the for the second convention after that. It might have been like 2015, and then I saw them removed in 2016. Uh, I can't remember, but I, I could have sworn that I did see uh, the uh, branding at one of the unveilings at one of the cons but again I could be wrong so but uh, that's the 360 pan um, you know nothing too crazy uh, the flexibility is pretty good in the arms I'll do that with it one of the uh, when I get to the articulation we'll uh, do some dynamic range on that and uh, you know so on and so forth right so that's basically the 360 pan Let's do, you know what, what we'll do, well, let's do the articulation next. And then uh, we'll see what I uh, feel like moving to after that. Alright, so we're going to do some articulation real quick. 
you know, you, you might want to do, I'm going to step in the shot here, obviously. Uh, you might want to do some kind of um, dynamic range with this guy, uh, especially with the board. So you're probably looking, um, you know, the arms. I'm not even going to bother taking the jacket off because the arms are unsightly. Uh, I wish they would have painted them or something. The joints look absolutely terrible um, if you have the jacket off. So I'm not even going to do that to you guys because it just uh, looks terrible. <laughs> so uh, arms go up about right there laterally. Pretty good. Obviously, you know, you have 360 range of motion of the wrists and so on and so forth. The head can do 360. The hat already comes off, obviously, like I said. Um, I'll take that off for a second just to make him look a little ridiculous. Uh, his arms go up, let's see, about right there, I guess, without too much, uh, too much difficulty. Yeah, it's about what you're going to get out of that. You know, jacket's obviously going to restrict it a little bit. Um, so I probably wouldn't go too much higher than probably this, I guess. Um, just be careful when you're articulating the shoulders because these are all one piece, so you don't want to tear that. So just be careful of that. The legs aren't too bad. You can get a almost 90 degree uh, bend out of that. If not, 90 degrees just about perfectly, right? And 90 degree bend to at the knee. There seems to be almost a double articulated joint in here. I'm not sure. Maybe not. No, just bending here. It almost felt like there was two, two points of articulation there and there, but I don't think so. It's basically the knee bends actually here. It's more the shin, believe it or not. So I could be wrong. I don't know. It almost feels like it does, but I don't know. But it's all right, though. Uh, anyway, getting back to it, uh, you obviously have uh, pretty good articulation in the, uh, in the ankles. Obviously, turn them all the way around. I don't know how many people are going to want to pose them with his ankles backwards? <laughs> uh, you got some to the left. You got some to the right. Again, that's uh, given for both. And legs, man, you could probably almost do a split with this guy. It's not bad. But he's not Jean Claude Van Damme, right? So we're not going to be doing that too much with him. So I probably wouldn't be doing that too much. Um, if you're going back with the leg, you got about right there. And you got about right there, right? All right. All right, man, so that's really articulation, I guess. Uh, you know, body movement, the torso. You've got some abduction as well. Pretty good. Right there. And uh, go back right there. And obviously, you got some decent motion to the side. Not as much as you do forward and back. But you get a little bit from the side, in the torso. Wish there was, wish there was a little bit more, especially with the board poses, because you might want to really stretch what you can do with them when you're doing those poses. Uh, so I kind of wish they would actually give me a little bit more in there. But all right, so that's the articulation demo for him. Um, hope that gives you some ideas of what you can do. Um, and that's that. So what we'll do next is go through the accessories. And we'll move on from there, right? So accessories, we're gonna burn through these real quick. Obviously, you get the uh, the Pepsi bottle, um, non-branded. You know, again, you can hit online some custom shops, eBay, find some one-six scale uh, um, branding for this. I'm, I'm sure it probably won't be too, too difficult. Uh, next, you actually obviously got the hoverboard, which is pretty darn cool. This is like a, like a Velcro kind of feel to it. I don't think it actually comes off though. So just be careful you don't try and like pull that or something. Um, it does rotate all the way around like so. There are magnets, I believe. Uh, man, if I remember correctly, there are magnets in two spots. Um, uh, man, I can't remember. I know there's one towards this region up here and obviously the footholds here. I think there might be one over here too as well. I can't, I can't remember. But detail one is pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty accurate to what it looked like in the film. Be cool if they could have figured out a way to actually make this uh, float, right? <laughs> Be pretty badass. So, put it that way too so you can see it. Uh, it's pretty cool, man. The detail's all there. Awesome accessory. 
Uh, you also have, obviously, you have the Nike uh, footwear box, which does open, like so. And you can put the uh, shoes in there. Which, not really like a placing for it in there, you kind of just for posing, I guess, or whatnot to shove them in. Just be careful you don't damage your shoes while you do it. Again, no branding. As you can see, plastic all the way around. Uh, pretty cool though. It's nice that they added that. You know, as I said, from what you get, as far as accessories, I think it's really awesome. You got the newspaper, which uh, I think I believe most of the writing on here is actually legible. Legible. So if you have a microscope or a magnifying glass, you know, feel free to uh, to check it out. But yeah, they gave you the newspaper too. I always love when Hot Toys gives you these little extras, man, as far as like the magazine covers, like, like Blitzway uh, with the Ghostbusters, you know, giving you, you know, the, the, the magazines, the newspaper, stuff like that. I really like when they give you this kind of stuff. It's awesome. And again, I think the writing is pretty much legible, so you can check that out when you get it in hand, see what it actually says, right? You Now, when he goes to the collectible shop, uh, to buy the Gray Sports Almanac, I think it was Blasphemer Pass, which is basically what the bag says as well. Sorry if there's a hair on that. Uh, you get the logo on the front, nothing on the back. And yes, you can put the almanac in it, which is this. And I like that they actually did this pretty accurate to the book, because I believe that the cover did come off, because I, I remember Biff had taken it off and put it uh, around one of his nudie mags. So that's actually pretty accurate. They could have skimped out on that and just made this one piece, but they didn't. It's actually uh, two separate pieces, the cover, and then you have the actual um, you know, magazine inside. It's only a few pages. It doesn't have uh, you know, all the pages that an almanac obviously would from the years that it has, that it describes. But I believe some of the writing in here is legible as well. Again, grab your magnifying glass and knock yourself out of the park, right? So, last quick shot of the front. Gray Sports Almanac. And of the back for you. Hopefully some of that writing is coming through. I'll let you read it, give you a second. But attention to detail is really good on this. And yes, like I said, you can put this in there. So why don't, why don't I do that for you? Slide it right in. The bag is kind of stuck together in the beginning. I was scared to open it because I thought maybe it would rip. Uh, and it wasn't supposed to open, but it does. So that was nice. You put that right in there. So I showed you the surf, I uh, showed you the hoverboard. Um, I'll go through the hands with you, I guess. And oh yeah, obviously you get a watch too. What's Marty McFly without his watch, right? So you get the watch too as well. Nice 80s watch. <laughs> these watches were awesome, man. I remember I wanted one of these so bad. Uh, when I was a kid. It's a pain in the ass trying to get my mom to get me anything though sometimes. <laughs> and obviously you get some open and closed hands. We'll do these two at a time. Give you some more range with posing. Again, open close grip. I'm going to actually just show you these. Hold them. Sometimes flat doesn't show you everything the way you You'd want to see them laying flat, so I'll angle it just a little bit more so you kind of get the detail on that. Again, basic uh, open and close grip hands, nothing fancy. The paint application is pretty even on both of them. You don't see many uh, any differences really, which is nice. So, that's pretty good. Sometimes it's those imperfections. You, you, you never know. There are people that look at that and they'll be like, hey, that one hand out of the ten is uh, miscolored. You know, and you'll never hear the end of it. Now, these are the two hands that come with the gun, I believe. Both open grip, obviously, to be able to hold the gun. Now, I did get these mixed up when I first uh, opened them. I put all the hands into one hand, but I'm pretty sure these are the two hands that came specifically with the uh, with the gun, with the arcade gun, rather. No, he does not come with a firearm. Well, at least not a real one. Actually, either way, it's not real, I guess, right? <laughs> So that's that, and here's the arcade gun. Now this man, I, I, it's cool that they included this, 
but I would have really liked if you were going to include this as an exclusive. Um, I would have honestly included the arcade game to itself. Like I would have paid a little bit more um, if they would have included the actual arcade game. You know that that would have been nice because it's it sucks. You have the gun, and it's great for taking photographs. And if you do Photoshop, but I hate Photoshop. I, I hate putting in backgrounds behind my figures unless I have a physical diorama. Uh, if I had a physical diorama um, background, then I would use it. But I don't. I don't Photoshop my photos, so really this is almost worthless to me. Um, do some shots until I, I can get a diorama background for it. You know, so it would have been nice to actually have the arcade game. You know, would have giving you more posable uh, options. But, you know, you, you can figure it out. I'm sure there'll be some custom people out there that will actually make the, the uh, arcade game. I wouldn't be surprised if you can probably get one already, who knows. So that's as far as the accessories. You obviously get the stand, but I'll show you that in some poses. So that's the gun again. It's the arcade gun. That's the one exclusive accessory that it comes with. So let's get to some quick poses. I'll do two of them for you. And we'll close it out, right? Okay guys, and before I forget, here's a shot uh, with him with the regular hair sculpt on, without the hat. Although I will be most likely keeping him in the hat, I think it uh, embodies the character a little bit more. But um, it still looks good. Uh, I think the hair, the hair seems, for me, maybe a little oversized for the head. Uh, probably could have been, I, I don't know, I'd have to re-watch the movie, but it does seem maybe a tad too much because uh, Michael J. Fox didn't have such a big head <clears throat> but oh, with the hat you don't really notice it I mean that's just what I'm seeing I, I could be completely wrong um, but who knows so oh and I wanted to mention something I, I kind of spoke without really thinking um, earlier his uh, jeans obviously aren't um, just uh, your, your regular blue jeans which is what I think I said these are obviously modeled after the jeans that um, my mom basically used to dress me in, or I used to, she used to buy me when I was nine years old. So I believe this movie came out in 1989. So that was the style of jeans back then, and that's pretty much what we all wore. So good times, right? All right, so let's uh, move on to uh, a pose real quick, or maybe two, and we'll uh, close out with comments and concerns. So I'm going to close you guys out with one dynamic pose. I'm sorry if I'm. Uh, not doing a little bit more, but this is all I have time for uh, for today. This is the uh, base that it comes with. I don't think I showed you guys that. You know, the base itself is supposed to mimic like the water from that scene when he goes across it. Uh, I would have been happy with even just like something that mimic concrete. I, I know the water was a you know it's a moment that stands out in the films for a lot of people, but I honestly would have been happy either way. So overall, man, I'm I'm, I'm happy again if. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, if you've got the personal attachment to this film like I do, I think you're going to love this figure. I definitely do. Um, pros and cons, you know, maybe the sculpt or maybe the, the expression could be changed slightly. But honestly, um, it doesn't bother me. Again, that's just me. That That's just uh, that's just my prerogative, my opinion. I know a lot of people, you know, were probably looking for something else. But, you know, this is, this is good uh, for me. I, I wish the exclusive item would have came with the full arcade game. Um, I know mass producing that would have definitely put an extra cost for uh, for Hot Toys, you know, but I'm sure they thought about it. I, I highly, I'd be surprised if they didn't, if they weren't thinking about it. Uh, you know, if someone's on that production team and you're making the gun, you know, I'm sure someone mentioned probably, hey, um, you know, do we want to make the arcade game uh, <laughs> and make it an entire exclusive? I, I would have liked that, you know, um, you know, simple plastic case molding, put the graphics on it and, you know, it would make uh, collectors that much happier. But it is what it is. I'm going to see if I can find a custom of it and uh, or commission somebody to put it together just so I have both. I, I think that would make the figure a lot more dynamic and definitely raise the uh, the bar on it a little bit. But um, like I've said, uh, I'm happy with the figure. So I hope I've uh, shown you what um, you needed to see, um, given you enough to hopefully make a decision. Uh, like I always mention, um, I forgot to, usually I mentioned at the beginning of the video and I forgot, but you know, uh, this video was obviously in 4K, so if you didn't hit the 4K option, I'm sorry. Um, feel, feel free to hit rewind and, and start it over again. Um, but anyway, uh, hit my, I'll probably have a high, some high resolution shots of uh, this up on my Instagram. Um, I'm on Instagram, YouTube, obviously, because you're watching this video. Um, I travel in the groups as well. So uh, check me out on Instagram if you want to see some uh, really nice shots of this. 
I'll probably put one up hopefully by tomorrow. I'll put, uh, most likely it'll be a shot of this. So that's it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, you know, hit me up. Um, hopefully I can answer them. Uh, oh, the one thing I probably will say, um, just after only a little bit of having the clamp around his waist on that jacket, I probably wouldn't keep him in uh, this kind of pose uh, very often, unless you can possibly uh, maybe put a little bit more padding on the inside of the clamps, because it does leave an imprint, and I just would be careful of that, because I, I'm noticing a little crease in it already, and I think eventually if you were to keep it in this for um, long term, you're probably going to see some of the paint get uh, worn and so on and so forth. Um, uh, what else? I know I'm dragging this on a little bit, but now all these things are coming to me now, unfortunately. So, oh, also the head, um, very tight around the neck area. So definitely, you know, you'll get warnings from Hot Toys to pick the head up uh, and make sure you, you tilt the head back rather and then rotate the head from side to side. You definitely want to do this with that because I've noticed it's pretty stiff. And um, that's really about it, I guess, as far as my, my, I guess, a few concerns. So again, all right, that's it. I'm closing out. Um, if I forgot to say something, oh well. <laughs> Just uh, hit, hit, hit me up and ask me if you got any questions. So that's it, fellas. Peace out. Deuces.